All right, exciting video because I have in my hand my new Precision Racing steering damper that I'm going to put on the 2023 XC300. So I wanted to do a quick video, show you what's in the box, what you get when you make your order for the steering damper, what you also you might want to buy because there's some add-ons that might be beneficial to you depending on how you want your bike set up and then go over why I chose this over some of the other options out there and show you what's unique about this precision racing damper. Okay, so all these pieces come in that box and this is what you're getting when you order the steering damper from Precision Racing. You have your unit here. First thing about this guy, incredibly tiny, very small compact, really, really like it. We'll do a close up and show you exactly why I'm using this over my previous stabilizer, which has always been a fast way. Got your neck collar. It's gonna go on the bike. Nice thing with this is it is two pieces. So you're not gonna have to remove that upper triple clamp to install this like you normally would. I'm gonna do that anyways when I install it because I wanna grease the steering bearing, but normally you wouldn't need to. You got the front plate. That's going to go on the front of this guy here when it clamps to the bars like so. And then you have this dust shield, which will go over the pin here as it goes in to the collar. And then it's got some hard plastic and a zip tie. And so this is so you can clean it up and not have your throttle cables get caught up in here. Okay, so this is the Precision Racing steering damper. This is a parabolic damper, and that just means the way it works is it's almost kind of like on a curve with how it engages and disengages. I have a hard time explaining it. Check out their website though, and there's some great visuals on there that will help explain why you would want to run a parabolic damper. So really nice body on here, all machined beautifully one adjuster knob and you can see here nice and information on there move that out of the way and then this is actually your low speed adjustment and that's going to control how fast it always sweeps now your bottom that little nut right in there that's your high speed and if I remember correctly, you adjust this first for how you want it, and then you fine tune with your low speed. And I think the idea is you get your low speed set right about where you would normally want it, you know, how much resistance you want, then set your high speed, install it, and then you can kind of play around with it for a feeling. So again, here's that front bracket that's going to clamp on. And the reason I went with the precision is because this is made to face the rider this direction. So the rider will be back here and this is going to clamp into the bar here. Nice thing with that is if you're running any kind of crossbar, it's going to work just fine under it. If you're running like a pro taper style without a crossbar, uh, precision racing does sell a bar pad that you're probably going to want just to keep yourself from uh, jamming your chest into that. But the nice thing with this is it doesn't raise the bars. This is everything. I mean, this is what you need to mount it. So not a lot of extra equipment where you have to get an adapting plate that's going to either raise your bars or something that goes over the bars. And now this is really sticking up. Or if you are like me and you run flex bars and you want to run an over bar setup, you have to do the flex bars where they have the little hump going across which is what I've been doing. Downfall to me with that is I keep whacking myself in the chest with the crossbar because of how high it raises it. I actually have here the current fast way just for a good comparison. You can really see the size difference in these units. And the weight, this one definitely feels a few ounces heavier. I'll measure these in, uh, put up the weights. But another thing to think of too is after just the weight alone of this being heavier, now I also have all the mounting and equipment to put it. Whereas this, it's all pretty much contained right in here. You know, I have my high speed and low speed are adjusted here on this one, but 
really I almost never set these unless it's quite a bit different of the terrain I'm riding in. So quite a big change as far as the size of the unit. And of course your collar here, which is a two piece. So the way that'll work is it'll sit like this. That's gonna slide in there and then we'll be on the bars. And then you can see here, this allows it to pivot as it moves side to side for the bar rotation of the bars. So a couple other things you might want. And one thing to know with that is because of it mounting to your bars here, running any kind of one piece top or bottom clamp is gonna be a problem. So that is why I ordered these new replacement bar mounts from them as well. So Precision Racing makes this. This is a direct replacement for the new KTM. They also have them for other bikes as well, but allows you to run in a back or forward position on your bars as well. Nicely machined. Neat thing though with this is, you know, like the new KTMs, they come with the rubber insert because it's a solid top and bottom. They're not too worried about it uh, twisting or anything, but typically a rubber is gonna give you problems if it's a solid rubber cone. So these are solid cones, top and bottom, but with rubber O-rings to help a little bit with the vibration dampening. New KTMs do not vibrate that much, so I'm not really worried about it. Plus with flex bars, I think I'm gonna be just fine. However, I do like a top, solid top mount clamp because I do long races, so being out there for three hours at a time, I don't want any issues to where I have to quit or it's gonna be hard to try to pull off and make a fix. So having a solid top mount means that these two are locked in and in case of a wreck, it's very unlikely for the bars to twist in the mount. Hopefully that gave you some good information on the Precision Racing damper and why I chose it. Mostly because I wanted something that's not gonna raise my bars up. Simple, light, and this is the chosen damper for the KTM off-road team. So it's been recommended to me by a old uh, mechanic from the team. And he said, after they tested it, riders loved it. And it's what they're still using today. So I have a feeling I'm really gonna like it, especially on the KTM. And because it's made to work for it since they make it for the factory off-road team. I'm really excited though to see how it works with the KTM, see how I feel it compares to the Fastway that I've been running forever. I mean, I've had that Fastway for almost seven years now and it's been great. But one downfall, I got to send it out for it to be rebuilt when, you know, oil goes bad in it. It's a lot like a set of forks, you know, your suspension. Oil seals, they're going to go bad. Nice thing with this is you can service the fluid all by yourself. Uh, they even have videos on their website on how to do it, which I really like. So this way I don't have to ship it off and, you know, wait a week or more for a turnaround to get it back. I can do it all myself, probably in about 30 minutes. So not too bad at all. But... Like I said, the big one, not a lot of extra equipment needed. I don't have to worry about raising my bars up or getting bars that will have a lower bend or some kind of weird setup. That's gonna be pretty much plug and play. You know, I had to order a one piece bottom or two piece bottom because the one piece top and bottom that comes stock on the bikes won't work. You can cut them if you want, you know, Precision Racing even says you can cut them and cut off the extra so everything fits. I didn't want to do that, it wouldn't look good, and it would, to me, just bother me. I'd have to try to clean up the edges and make it look somewhat decent. It, not worth it. I'll save the old pieces, and then when I get a new bike, I'll put it back on there and sell it to whoever wants to buy it, or if they want to pay more, leave this on. But I have that option, at least if I don't cut it. So I chose to buy these. You could get any other aftermarket, you know, universal clamp, but. I like that it's made to fit specifically in the new KTM and is gonna work beautifully. And then again, with this top piece, leaves room for the clearance of, you know, this is gonna sit in there kind of like that. 
So lots of room for it to be in there cleanly, but a regular top mount wouldn't work. You know, you'd have to cut the current KTM one. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Let me know if you have some experience with it as well. Let me know. I'm curious to see what people think, but everyone I've talked to that runs one really loves it. Also, FXR gear, you know, we're almost into 2023. So if you need any information on gear, shoot me an email with the link down in the description or leave a comment. We'll get you set up, throw you a little discount as well. If you need any kind of lighting for your bike, street bike, dirt bike, helmet lights, check out Cyclops. I've been using them for nine years now for my night races and I really, really enjoy their products. Made locally in the Pacific Northwest, amazing owners and people working there. Uh, they've treated me great through all these years, but they make really high quality lighting options and wiring kits. Um, I can't say, you know, anything bad about them. They've been wonderful to me forever and their lighting's great. It really does uh, light up where you're going. Good field of view, good range. It's not like you're going to have hot spots. Nice, good, clean light everywhere, which is what you need. And you don't want to outrun your lights, which I've never been able to do with these. So check them out. Cyclops Adventure, amazing lighting. Street bike, I got their lights on my Super Tenere, you know, for the light bar and replacement bulbs. So check them out and see if they can get something set up for your bike.